Good afternoon, good morning, Sabah al Khair, Bokir Tov. Um, we are starting now our first joint webinar in the US of IPPNW, the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, and METO, the Middle East Treaty Organization. And um, without saying much more, my name is Sean Dolev, I'll be the moderator. I'm the executive director of the Middle East Treaty Organization. I'm very happy to present uh, Ira Helfand. Please, Ira. Thank you, Sharon. And welcome to all of you, and thank you for joining this event this morning. I, I am with the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, which is a global federation of healthcare professionals in more than 60 countries around the world, whose job, whose mission, is to educate people about the medical consequences of nuclear war. And that is my job here this morning also. Um, the Middle East is undoubtedly the most complicated place on the planet. And fortunately for me, it is not my job today to try to make sense of this incredible complexity and to figure out exactly how we're going to proceed to bringing about a weapons free, a zone free of weapons of mass destruction in the Middle East. My job is simpler. It's simply to describe what happens if we fail, if we don't bring about the elimination of weapons of mass destruction, particularly nuclear weapons from the Middle East, and if these weapons are ever used. In a sense, People do understand already, everyone, that this would be a terrible thing if nuclear weapons are used. But I think it's important for us to remember that we don't understand fully, any of us, how terrible this would be. Um, we have in our mind images of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and, and these are very powerful reminders of the power of nuclear weapons. They're a powerful warning to us of what these weapons can do. But the most important thing that we need to understand about that experience in Japan in 1945 is that it does not begin to prepare us for what will happen if nuclear weapons are used again today. Uh, the weapons which exist on the planet now are much more powerful than the bombs that destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, the North Koreans, who are, have perhaps the, the most recent and most primitive nuclear arsenal among the nine nuclear armed states, they've tested a 200 kiloton weapon, 15 times more powerful than the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. And so we have to understand that even an attack on a single city, one of the large densely populated uh, centers in the Middle East, Tehran, Tel Aviv, Damascus, Baghdad, could kill hundreds of thousands of people, possibly over a million people in an attack on that single city in one day. But we also need to consider what would happen if there were a larger nuclear war in the Middle East. And for this, I think we, we have to turn to literature that was uh, to studies that were done that, that used South Asia, India, and Pakistan as their model. Um, but the data that was generated there is, is generally applicable to the Middle East as well. Uh, what we have found is that a limited nuclear war between India and Pakistan that involved as few as 100 Hiroshima-sized bombs, and it is important to remember in this context, the Israeli arsenal already is estimated at more than 60 nuclear warheads. Uh, 100 Hiroshima-sized bombs we kill up to 20 million people outright from the explosions, the fires, the immediate radiation effects. But beyond that direct devastation, the fires caused by these bombs would loft enormous amounts of soot into the upper atmosphere. In the case of 100 Hiroshima-sized bombs detonated over large cities, you could put up to six and a half million tons of soot into the upper atmosphere. And that would block out sunlight across the planet, drop temperatures globally an average of 1.3 degrees centigrade. The temperature drops would be much greater in the interior regions of North America and Eurasia. It would shorten the growing season. It would cause a significant decline in precipitation. It would destroy much of the ozone uh, in the upper level of the atmosphere, allowing ultraviolet light to come through in much higher doses to the surface. And as a result of all of these uh, climate disruption effects, there would be a marked decline in food production, not just in the area where the war were fought in South Asia or in the Middle East in the future, but throughout the entire planet. And that precipitous decline in food production would lead to a global famine that we have calculated could put up to 2 billion people at risk of starvation. 
an event of this magnitude would not mean the extinction of our species. It would mean the end of civilization as we know it. No civilization in human history has ever withstood a shock of this magnitude. And there is no reason to believe that the very complex interrelated economic system on which we all depend to put food on our tables, to clothe us, to provide shelter, there's no reason to believe that this system could survive a disruption of that magnitude. It would not only be the danger of a large regional war in the Middle East that we would face if nuclear weapons are not removed and other weapons of mass destruction are not removed from the Middle Eastern zone. As we know, this area has become a, a focus of contention among the superpowers from the moment that the world economy became dependent on oil and natural gas. And that dependence still continues. And, and major events in the Middle East always have the potential for dragging in uh, or perhaps being precipitated by outside great powers. And so events in the Middle East would not only potentially trigger a regional war in the Middle East, but an even larger conflagration involving the United States, Russia, China. We need to understand that these events are not just theoretical constructs. War of this magnitude, destruction of this magnitude is a real threat if we do not get rid of these weapons. The problem is that we find it very hard to believe this. Even those of us who know clearly that this is the danger that we face, can't quite get our, our arms around this. You know, we look around and we see the world that we live in, even in the Middle East, which has seen so much terrible violence, we still can't believe that the horrible destruction of nuclear war could actually befall us. And that's a huge problem because since we have difficulty believing that we actually face this danger, we have difficulty making ourselves confront it. But that's the, that's the, the, the mission that we must take on the task which we must assume. Nuclear war not only can happen if we do not get rid of nuclear weapons in the Middle East, and for that matter, throughout the world, nuclear war is going to happen. And the horrible things that I've just been talking about are actually going to come to pass. So the stakes could not possibly be higher. It is critical that we create a zone in the Middle East that is free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction. It is critical that we take the immediate step of getting the United States back in to the agreement with Iran that it walked away from two years ago. And it is the job of the rest of the panelists today to talk to us about how we can proceed in this incredibly dangerous situation. Thank you.